Nikki. I'm here with some more security tips for you. Today, I think uh, with the midterm elections coming up this year, I wanted to delve into the topic of voting machines. I, I wanted to give you an understanding of the voting machines and the vulnerabilities that, are, that reside within those. The first thing that we'll find is that the updates aren't done very regularly. They're, they're machines that are used once a year, maybe twice during an election year, um, once every couple of years. It's very irregular, and the uh, so the the updates that you'll get on those um, they're not very frequent, um, and when they're done, it's it's a slew of updates, and hopefully the hard drive has enough room to receive the updates, and um, hopefully maintenance is done on the machines enough that that the uh, updates are regular, etc. Another problem with voting machines and the voting system is is my favorite topic, which is passwords. So there might be a, still a default password on the machine. Um, there may be a poor password. You know, one of my favorites, password. Um, that might be on there. There might be one, two, three, four, five on there. Uh, different passwords that aren't strong. They don't have a lot of, of strength to them. And then um, the default password may not have changed. Now this also includes um, the points of failure for the data itself that's trans transmitting from the machine itself to the network, to the, the devices on the network, to the database that crunches the data and stores it, etc. There may be flaws with the passwords on any one of those systems. There may be flaws with the fact that some of those systems weren't fully updated. You might have a SQL um, server that's compiling all those all those votes and storing them that may have vulnerabilities in them. Um, one of the vulnerabilities, actually it was discovered last year, um, the DEF CON guys, they're so fun, they took uh, voting machines, a variety of them, you can uh, look at this on YouTube, it's pretty interesting, um, They and I'll post a link for you too. They took voting machines and hacked into them and the, the target was uh, the fact that there was a unpatchable vulnerability on um, one of the servers that was involving OpenSSL. And um, OpenSSL just, it can't be used anymore. So it, it's not being patched or anything like that. And it existed on these voting machines. Um, but you can look up that exercise. Another thing to consider is the operating system on these machines might be old, like way old, like XP, which was 2003 or so. XP is so old that it's, um, it's not being updated anymore, but it was a really good operating system at the time and it's still being used commonly, commonly today. I hate to say that. I just wish Microsoft would build something that was kind of like XP because it worked really well. Another thing is that there may be a lack of funding in the government organization running these voting machines to be able to support the IT staff um, or upgrade the machines to be compliant and secure and everything like that. Um, but speaking of, of the state and the government, you have 50 states controlling these um, voting machines. And for federal elections, that's, uh, they, they each have their own philosophies in general. And I'm sure there's compliance that they have to abide by to be a federal voting polling place. But uh, you still have 50 different philosophies for running the maintenance on these machines. You, you'd hope that, um, that the philosophy is a strong one where they, they put a lot of focus into security on the computer, proper updates, proper password changes regularly, and all the things that you need to make your computer secure, because um, it is our vote. So get out there and vote. Whenever your elections come up, be a good voter. Go out there, put your, put your ballot in, and uh, make your voice count. Um, otherwise, uh, have a happy voting season. Thanks for watching. Bye.